Hi Table Tennis Junkies! This week's video is a bit of a continuation from last week's video on serve theory. I'll be talking a little bit about serve depth and how I categorize my serves. It's important to be able to do that and to learn it and I'm really excited to be showing it to you. So let's jump into it. I like to categorize my serves into four different categories. There's the low risk, low reward serves. There are the high risk, high reward serves. There are low risk, high reward serves. That's really what you're kind of aiming for most of the time. And then there's the high risk, low reward serves. And those are really the serves you just want to stay away from pretty much at all times. An example of something that might be low risk is a serve that is just real easy to do. You are comfortable with it. There's not a whole lot of movement or motion involved and your opponent won't be able to, to attack the serve. An example of a high risk serve would be something that has a lot of motion, it's hard to control, or if it leaks long or a long serve that your opponent can attack. Those would be high risk. An example of a low reward serve is something that you probably won't win the point outright. It might be like a setup serve, so it's, it's kind of setting you up for a third ball attack where a high reward serve is a serve that would potentially win the point outright, like a fast serve that you might be catching your opponent off guard. Another example of a high reward serve might be something with a lot of spin on it that would be tough for your opponent to read or to handle that spin. Let's start with an example of a low risk, low reward serve. An example might be a short dead ball serve. So because it's short, your opponent isn't going to be able to attack it and with the dead ball serve there's usually not a whole lot of motion going on so it's going to be easy con to control and to keep it short every time. But on the other hand because it's a no spin you're probably not going to fool your opponent and they're going to be able to get that one back. Really what you're trying to do is, is follow it up with an attack of your own. So there's not really a whole lot of rewards straight off of the serve it's more of like a setup for yourself later in the point. Here's an example of the low risk, low reward serve. It's low risk because my opponent won't be able to attack the serve, and it's low reward because there's no spin on it that my opponent's going to have to deal with, and I'm probably not going to win the point outright on this serve. Let's move on to an example of a high risk, high reward serve. An example might look like a fast long serve where you're trying to catch your opponent off guard and win the point quickly and without much effort. You got to be careful with it though because if it's long your opponent will have that opportunity to attack it and also at, at, at the serving contact there's a lot of motion, there's a lot of quick motion so it's easy to make mistakes on this serve. Here's an example of the high risk high reward serve. It's high risk because my opponent is able to loop the serve and it's high reward because I'm trying to win the point outright by catching my opponent off guard. Next let's talk about low risk high reward serves. This is the category where you want most of your serves to land in because it's going to be tough for your opponent and you'll get the biggest bang for your buck on these serves. So an example would be a short spinny serve, like maybe a short backspin serve. Because it's short, your opponent won't be able to attack it right off the bat. And because of that spin, your opponent's going to have to read the spin and deal with the spin in some way. So it's easy to make mistakes when they're doing that and it'll help set yourself up for a follow-up. So if you have a lot of side spin on the ball or a lot of backspin, you can pretty much guarantee that the ball is going to go in one side of the table or the other. And if you have a good backspin, you can, you can narrow your opponent's options down to either a drop shot or a push. So it's, it's really good for, help, helping set, for helping set yourself up and also to kind of control your opponent. Here's an example of a low risk, high reward serve. This is where you want most of your serves to be because your opponent won't be able to loop the serve and they're going to have to deal with a lot of spin in order to get it back.
The last category are serves that are high risk and low reward. These serves you pretty much just want to avoid at all times, and an example might be a no spin serve that is long so your opponent can attack it and they don't have to deal with any spin, or maybe a fast serve that isn't so fast, uh, your opponent will have an easy opening on that, or maybe a serve that is short but it's bouncing like three or four or five times, those serves are pretty bad. Or another example might be a serve that has a lot of wrist or there's a lot of motion in the contact but not a whole lot of spin or maybe it's leaking long and your opponent is able to attack it. One of my favorite examples of a high risk, low reward serve is the ghost serve. You see it all the time on YouTube and people are, are bragging like, I can do the, the ghost serve. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a serve where the ball stops on your opponent's side of the table and comes back. Sometimes it'll, it'll go over and come back over the net. And I see it and I, I, I laugh every time that someone like talks about, I can do the ghost serve or whatever. It's really a bad serve for several reasons. And the first is, in order to get the kind of spin to have the ball stop on your opponent's side of the table and come back, you have to really come under the ball. So there's a lot of backspin on it, but there's also a lot of risk involved. So as the ball lands, you have to, you're having to come underneath the ball and the contact point is, is very thin. So the ball's coming down this way and you're going this way and there's just really not a whole lot of room to contact the ball. So that's the first thing I don't like about the ghost serve. And the other main thing about the ghost serve, and this is probably an even bigger problem, is the shortness of it. So when you serve too short, that's a, that's a serve that lands more than once on your opponent's side of the table. So if it bounces three times or four times or five times or more, that's really a bad serve because what happens is the ball, it moves too slowly and your opponent, it's, it's easy for your opponent to step in and to angle you or to see that it's short. Really the best type of short serve is one where the second bounce lands on your opponent's white line on like the very end of the table. And the reason for that is because if it's, if it's landing so the second bounce is on the end, your opponent might misjudge it so they might think it's long when it's actually short. But also the ball has a lot more forward energy when it's second bounce is on the white line. So if they come in to try to push it or try to drop shot it, the ball will be further back and it's very hard to effectively push it or effectively drop it if it has that forward energy. So with going back to the ghost serve, it's gonna, it's gonna land on your opponent's side of the table and it's gonna kind of sit and then it'll kind of come back where it, because it's sitting there, it's easy for your opponent to come in and to angle you or to just see that it's short and it's, it's just not effective in any way. And really the ghost serve, you never see it done at any level in table tennis, not at the top levels, not at the low levels. And the reason because at the low levels, it's, it's too difficult to do. And at the top levels, it's just, it's so easy to return that no one wants to do the serve at all. Here's some examples of the high risk, low reward serves. You wanna stay away from these serves because you're not gonna gain a whole lot from them and there's a lot of risk involved with doing the serve or your opponent is gonna have an easy opening off of the serve. Here's like a long, slow one that it's, it's kind of easy to attack. It should be fast, but it's not fast. And that one, your opponent, if they're, even if they're not ready for it, they'll probably end up looping it and you're gonna be at a disadvantage right away. Not a good serve. Here's an example of a high risk, low reward serve that's too short. And the reason why that's bad is because it's easy for your opponent to see that it's short because it doesn't have any forward motion. And it'll be easy for your opponent to come in and angle you or do something effective on the return, either with a push or a drop or with an angle or even with something more aggressive. Here's the ghost serve, and it's another example of a serve that's too short and not an effective serve. One more example of a high risk, low reward serve is just the comeback serve where it goes over the net and then comes back. Very difficult to do, and it's really not going to gain you a whole lot because it's too short.
Recapping on today's video, I like to categorize my serves into four different baskets. There are the low risk, high reward serves. These serves are maybe like a short spinny serve where your opponent won't be able to attack it. They'll have to deal with some spin. There isn't a whole lot of risk in the motion of the serve and hopefully you'll set yourself up. Those are the best serves in the game and that's where I like to put most of my serves. There's the low risk, low reward serve. That, an example of that would be like a no spin short where your opponent can't attack it, but you're probably not gonna win the point outright. It's more of a setup serve. There's the high risk, high reward serve. That's like a fast serve where you're trying to win the point outright and maybe catch your opponent off guard. And then there's the high risk, low reward serve. And that would be an example of a crappy fast serve or a, a ghost serve or a comeback serve or something like that. I've set up a Patreon account that I've linked in the description. This is kind of new to me, so if you don't know what that is, it's a way to donate to my video or to my YouTube channel. Um, if, if these videos have helped you or if you'd like to donate in, in any way, I would appreciate it. it. You can just find it in the links. If you don't want to donate, that's totally fine. I'm going to keep making the videos and you can keep learning for free. And if you like this video, and please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I'd love to hear what your favorite serves are in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.